Good evening and welcome to News 9. I'm Nolan Pinto. Now, first up, after a hardline separatist uh, in Kashmir, Gilani dropped a bomb on the BJP. The Saffron Party has now come out demanding an apology from him. The question is, will Gilani's bomb affect Narendra Modi's image in Jammu and Kashmir? April 18, 2014. Huryat leader drops a bomb. It was mere claim made by the Kashmiri separatist leader, Syed Ali Shah Gilani. But his claim was enough to pose a threat to BJP's image and stand that they have always maintained on Jammu and Kashmir. Well, Gilani claimed Narendra Modi's two emissaries had approached him on March 22nd. The two representatives had reportedly sought his help to resolve the Kashmir issue. but Gilani supposedly rejected the offer of meeting Modi, thanks to Modi's RSS background and also the Godra taint. So we have said that look, Narendra Modi, Modi Saab ke baare mein jo kuch aap kehte hain ki wo Kashmir ke masale mein koi madadgar banenge, ham aap, main aap se ye kahunga ki wo RSS ka aadmi hai. RSS mein wo ek us 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 ideology ka wo alambardar hai aur us ideology par usne halap liya hai. RSS ki wo jo unki ideology hai. Aur phir wo BJP ka ek leader hai. और उस हिस्सेत से भी वो किसी भी हाल में जम्मू कश्मीर के मसले के बारे में हकीकत पसंदाना पॉलिसी तैयार करने के लिए तैयार नहीं होगा। Gilani also claimed Modi had sent his representatives to other separatist groups in Kashmir, putting BJP in a spot of bother. So to save their image, BJP in an immediate reaction tweeted on his Twitter account stating, "Gilani's claims are false and mischievous." BJP categorically denies claim by Gilani that RPM candidate Sri Narendra Modi sent emissaries to meet him. False and mischievous claims. If that was the late last night's response via tweet, BJP decided to come out in the open and face Gilani's K. Googly. Party spokesperson Ravi Shankar Prasad said, Gilani's statements are false and malicious. He also demanded an apology from Gilani over his malicious intent. The news has appeared in different segments of media about an alleged claim of the separatist leader Huriyat of Jammu and Kashmir, Sri Gilani, that two alleged representatives of Sri Narendra Modi met him about the issue of Kashmir. The BJP would like to emphasize that the said claim is totally baseless, unfounded, mischievous, malicious and full of prejudice against the BJP. We would like to highlight very clearly and categorically and with full sense of responsibility that no representative of Sri Narendra Modi whatsoever has ever met Sri Gilani. Meanwhile, former President Nitin Gadkari asked Gilani to name the emissaries who had met him instead of playing games. <laughs> While BJP is fighting it hard to safeguard their prime ministerial candidate's image, Congress has demanded a clarification from Modi. They have even termed Gilani's claims involving Modi is a complete shocker. To contact him, this is a big thing in his own way. That Modi is playing the role of Kashmir in Kashmir, which is playing the role of Kashmir, भारत से अलग करना चाहते हैं उनके साथ क्या बातचीत करना है गिलानी साहब ने सफाई नहीं दी है उन्होंने इंफॉर्मेशन दी है गिलानी साहब ने सफाई देने की बजाय ये बताया है कि वो किसी मसले पर उनको पास भेजा था और उन्होंने साफ कह मना कर दिया कि मोदी साहब का जो माजी है यानी जो उनका पास्ट है उसको देखते हुए हम उनसे कोई बातचीत नहीं कर सकते सफाई तो मोदी साहब को देनी चाहिए वेल अ शॉक ऑफ अ श्योर 
One wonders why Modi is seeking help of separatists as they claim. But other questions arise too. Why did Gilani speak about the meet after one month? What is the hidden agenda behind the sudden revelation? Well, only time will tell. A News 9 report. Well, former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh and founder of the Jai Samaikya Andhra Party, Kiran Kumar Reddy, has sprung a surprise for all. In fact, he has decided to opt out of the Lok Sabha elections and that too at the last minute. Now, he has chosen to field his brother Kishore Kumar Reddy from Chittur constituency instead. Now, earlier, it was expected that Kiran Kumar Reddy would be filing his nomination papers today. But in a surprise move, he has chosen to opt out of contesting the elections scheduled on the 7th of May. Well, moving on, days after quoting controversy for an alleged hate speech, Amit Shah has addressed a presser today. Now, the General Secretary had a much-awaited revelation to make. Take a look. Modi to file Varanasi nomination on 24th. BJP's Prime Ministerial candidate Narendra Modi will make his candidature from Varanasi official on the 24th of April. BJP General Secretary and Modi's close aide Amit Shah confirmed the date in Lucknow today. He exuded confidence that the BJP wave will transform into a tsunami following the BJP PM candidate's nomination filing. But Amit Shah was in a spot when he was asked about his controversial revenge hate speech issue. Amit Shah plays dodgeball. After multiple attempts to duck questions, Amit Shah finally spoke out on the issue. And when he did, what did he say? Amit Shah calls his speech a no-ball. जहाँ तक जिन मेरे भाषणों से विवाद का सवाल था, उसके पीछे मेरा कोई आशा है मोड़ कोड़ पंडक का बंद करने का नहीं था एक बात। जहाँ तक चुनाव आयोग का सवाल है, भाषणों के इंटरप्रेटेशन की सर्वोच्च संस्था चुनाव आयोग है, उनका इंटरप्रेटेशन सबने मानना चाहिए। अगर चुनाव आयोग का इंटरप्रेटेशन ये है कि इसमें कहीं पर चूक हुई है, तो मैंने आगे ही कह दिया कि कभी-कभार कोई बॉलर बॉलिंग करता है तो नो बॉल पड़ जाती है भैया, चलिए। अब खत्म हो गई बात आगे बढ़िए। This was how Amit Shah chose to answer the question and said that people should move on from discussing the issue. And then it was time to hit out at the UPA. Amit Shah did not want to lose out on the opportunity to train his guns on the Congress. He launched a scathing attack on the current UPA government, accusing them of diverting from real issues. सीमाओं की सुरक्षा, थमा हुआ विकास, रुपये का आमूलन, आंतरिक सुरक्षा, महिलाओं की सुरक्षा, इन सब मुद्दों के जवाब देने की बजाय कांग्रेस के शीर्ष नेता व्यक्तिगत आरोपों पर ज्यादे ध्यान केंद्रित करते हैं और चुटकुलों पर ज्यादे ध्यान केंद्रित करते हैं।
with the AP chief Arvind K. Jival openly challenging Modi and the Congress hoping to bank on the local leader's sway. Modi will have stiff competition in the land of the temples. It remains to be seen if Amit Shah's claims of a BJP tsunami can help the Saffron Party's PM candidate beat all odds and emerge victorious. A new Snayan report. Well, time and again, the foreign media has always detested BJP's prime ministerial candidate Narendra Modi. Well, even the United States of America denied him a visa. But now it looks like the tables are, well, turning. A new lease of life for Modi abroad. The Guardian is all praises for Modi. After the Gujarat riots, the foreign media has detested Narendra Modi and have been largely unsparing towards him. Well, not just the foreign media, but there are countries like USA that went ahead and boycotted the Chief Minister of Gujarat. Now, the tables seem to be turning for the Prime Minister hopeful. After Time magazine nominated him as a Person of the Year in 2013, the international media has gone on to feature more favourable articles on Modi. In a latest article by The Guardian titled Narendra Modi, India's saviour or sectarian with blood on his hands, author Ian Jack has gone on to explain the scenario in London and how the Indians there want Modi to become the Prime Minister. Not just that, he has struck the same chord that every person from the Saffron Brigade has been talking about, including Narendra Modi himself. He said that while Modi as a Chief Minister has been accused of standing and staring as people were massacred in Gujarat, why wasn't anyone arrested when the Sikhs were beaten to death by Congress activists? Why isn't Rajiv Gandhi accused of standing and staring, even as he was the Prime Minister of the country? While Modi has refused to express any kind of regret, all Rajiv said when the Sikh riots broke out was, when a mighty tree falls, it's only natural that the earth around it shakes a little. The article staunchly questions the role Rajiv Gandhi played when the Sikh riots had broken out and draws comparisons with the Gujarat riots that has time and again heckled Modi's PM hopes. Journalists staunchly questioning Indians on how desperate we were for economic development that we forgot humanity had actually caught the attention in social media circles. This had not only put Modi in bad light but also us Indians. Now, with this article coming to light, it seems that they are finally cutting Modi some slack. It remains to be seen how the international media will further strengthen the case for Modi abroad. A new Snyan report.